Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. It was about a year ago that we did the Newbie Trail Run. It was very exciting, a lot of fun. I learned a lot. But since that time, we've had the pandemic, we've had some lockdowns, so I haven't been able to get out as much as I'd like to. But since that time, I've managed to acquire a number of items for off-road and recovery gear. And in this episode, we're gonna have a look at them. Stick around. Just recently, I was out on a newbie trail run with some friends and it took me back to when I did my first newbie run last year. And it was a lot of fun, I learned a lot, and since that time, I've acquired a little bit of off-road and recovery gear. Let's first start by our newbie run experience where we learned we had to air down our tires. So on the newbie run, I used a key to deflate my tires, but I have since then acquired tire deflators as you saw in last week's video. I'll have a link to all the videos and all the products that I talk about in the description section below. Also on that newbie run, I learned that you have to use a wrench and a socket to disconnect your sway bar links. Well, since then I've acquired Sway Bar Quick Disconnects, which helps the process go a lot quicker. And I've made a video on that item if you wanted to investigate that for yourself. And of course, after you've deflated your tires for the trail and disconnected your Sway Bar links and everything, when you're done, you have to, of course, reconnect those Sway Bar Disconnects. But also, you have to reinflate your tires. Now, I haven't made a specific video on the tire inflator that I got because I want to use it a little bit more before I can give some honest feedback, but here's what I have to say right now. This is the Smitty Belt Model 2781 Tire Inflator. It's a very solidly built unit. It's got a pressure relief valve here, it's got a breaker here to reset if, uh, if you trip the breaker. It has an on off switch. It's got this handle right here. Under this cap is the filter. And then here's the hose that the pressure comes out of. But something you'll notice is that it's not a standard compressed air hose fitting. They call this the Japanese version versus the American standard version. That's okay if you're still just going to be using it to inflate your tires because it can simply connect to the included hose which has a fitting that works with this. And then at the end of this hose, you have your pressure gauge and you're all set to go. It's a heavy duty tire inflator and requires that for power, you connect it to your battery. Any air pump that has a 12 volt plug on the end of it is not going to be considered a heavy duty tire inflator. And when you have large tires on your Jeep, you want to have a tire inflator that pumps out a lot of air. And that's one of the reasons why I got this pump. It pumps out 5.65 cubic feet of air per minute, which is a lot. And the price point was very reasonable. So those are the good things. I've used it and I am really happy. It'll pump up my tires from 20 to 30 PSI in 60 seconds each. So that's pretty impressive. Now here's the things that I'm concerned about. This hose that is provided is pretty chintzy and I believe after a few uses that it will eventually wear out and I'll have to replace it. And then I'm going to be stuck that the hose I get will probably have the standard fitting and I'll have to change out these fittings. The other thing is that this unit when it runs gets extremely hot. And when you want to take it apart you have to wait for it to cool because it's too hot to touch. The other thing is this gauge is not very accurate at all. It's actually useless. The other thing is this is what you screw onto the valve stem of your tire. But the way this pump operates is when you turn it on, the air is passing through this as soon as you turn it on and then you attach it to your tire. You don't attach it to your tire first, then turn this on because you could blow the circuit or hurt the pump. It's interesting, they don't talk about that, but it's a, one of the features of this pump. So if I was even gonna replace this with a clamp-on type of fastener, 
instead of a screw on tight, I'd have to make sure I get one of the kind that allows for the air to pass through. So that being said, this is the pump I got. I'm really happy with the performance because it really fills up the tires very quickly. And it does come with a bag, which is nice. It's not a very sturdy bag, so I do anticipate in time that it'll eventually wear out. But for now, it works. Also, since that newbie run, I did the art bag trailhead recognizance run. I wanted to go find where the trailhead was for the art bag trail. And so I made this video to kind of share what I found with my viewers. And from that video, a lot of subscribers shared that if you are going to be on your own when you're on a trail, it's very highly suggested that you have a winch. One person described a winch as a get out of jail free card if you're getting stuck on the trail. So I've made a video on the steel bumper and the winch installation and you can have a look at those if something like that is of interest to you. But if you find that a winch is just a little bit too much expense to put on your Jeep, I did do a video with my friend Dieter on how you could use a high lift jack as a recovery tool. And in that video we also shared the notion of perhaps using a come along as well. So you could check that out as a low cost alternative. And then of course I had the video where I shared with you all of the items in my recovery gear bag like the tree saver, the toe straps, the snatch block and some of the hard shackles. And since that time, since that kit didn't come with soft shackles, I picked up some soft shackles as well on Amazon. This is the Gear America trail recovery kit bag that I got. This bag itself can be used as an apron over a winch line if you needed to dampen your line so should something break the line won't go flying all over. Then you've got toe strap. You've got a tree saver. and then you've got your snatch block which I understand now uh, a lot of people are using rings instead of a snatch block which uh, is a lot lighter um, and works just as well so it's something that you may want to consider instead of a snatch block. And then some nice gloves. Now, along with this bag, which functions as an apron, I went ahead and also picked up some soft shackles off of Amazon, the links which of course will be in the description. And these are rated for 35,000 pounds. They have a protective sleeve and uh, they work quite well. I think if anything else, I would probably look to getting a kinetic rope to help with recovery from maybe being in some mud. Because a tow strap will be something that is good if you're trying to tow somebody who's stuck and the tow vehicle is on dry land. But if both vehicles are on muddy terrain, a kinetic rope would be a better tool to use, which is a video all on its own. But so there's my recovery gear that I purchased on discount as I explained in this video and certainly last but not least adding a two inch lift and larger tires has certainly helped my experience off-road I didn't feel as nervous crossing a river this time you can see how over the year I've acquired this gear to be prepared for the trail now in the tip segment coming up, I'm going to share with you a tip of something else that you should bring along that's really important. But I invite you to share in the comments section below some tips that you would suggest for people to include in their off-road recovery gear equipment. So let's move on to the tip segment.
Now for some cheaper, jeeper tips. In this week's tip segment, related to off-road recovery gear and equipment, I just wanted to share with you a small item that's a big deal. And that is to make sure you bring a garbage bag or garbage container. This is an item that I spoke to in the how to use a high lift jack video where Dieter demonstrated environmental stewardship when you're a cheaper or off-roader. I think it's a brilliant idea to make sure that you're prepared not only to bring out your own garbage but if you come across some people's garbage that you just grab it and take it off the trail. I know a lot of clubs will go out there on their own and they do trail cleanup specific runs where they go out there specifically for the purpose to pick up other people's garbage. It's unfortunate that they have to do that. It's great that they do and individually we can help communally by bringing our own garbage bags along and bringing our own garbage out with us when we leave and picking up anything that we find. I know it's not a big deal but I really think it's important. So now let's hear what our subscribers have to say. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from last week's budget tire deflators video. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, I have these in the Boulder Tools brand. It takes a little over 5 minutes to air down to my set pressure. But if you drill the relief hole with a 5 64ths drill bit, it will cut the air down time to less than 3 minutes. Signed, Josh. Hey Josh, thank you so much for an excellent tip. I'm not sure what that'll do to the performance at the lower tire pressures, but it's worth a shot. Hey, well that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful, and if you did, remember to hit that subscribe button and give this video a like. And until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.